do our first speaker, Tracy. Thank you. Well, that was pretty fabulous, wasn't it? Um, really pithy, very um, well done, uh, a great sort of opener to this guidance uh, and these suggestions. And I can't tell you what an important day it is for us here in West Yorkshire. It's quite a special day. And really delighted that this report has also got the attention of national broadcasters, The Guardian, Radio 4, Lunchtime. There is a need for this. And if I could just shout out to my colleague Ian, my ex-colleague Ian Yates, for leading on this work and for having that oversight that we could uh, make a difference in partnership with the university. And um, interestingly, uh, a lot of this comes from lived experience. All the people that are part of the 100 women and girls part of this, um, this survey and this research, it's their lived experience that is the most powerful. And only the last few months I've been training for the half marathon, the Rob Burroughs half marathon that is this Sunday. You can still sponsor me, by the way. <laughs> uh, but trying to find places where I can run after work or where I can train it is really sometimes incredibly difficult. And I'd go to the gym rather than go out running on the street, but it wasn't as effective and it's not as good. So we're all on a daily basis making decisions about our safety. And certainly this video gives us that start statistic, doesn't it? That women and girls are three times more likely to be afraid of using parks than men. Three quarters of girls um, are, are nervous of going into a park. Half of women feel they will be unsafe in parks. So how can parks be open for everybody when the people who are meant to be using them feel unsafe? So I, I, I do understand that use of parks goes beyond that encouragement. It has to have political leadership and heft behind it. It has to have money, power and the smarts, the data to help us and that political will to make it happen. We shouldn't have to adapt our behaviours because our, our world isn't fit for us, that we haven't been in that conversation. And it's so interesting, parks are decided and designed by men, and women are the afterthought. We should be right in the room, as that Hamilton song, be in the room where it happens. We have to be in the room with those decision makers, those people that do the maintenance, those, people, those council leaders, politicians, we have to be in that room uh, sharing our lived experience. And um, as the only woman metro mayor in the country, with the most extraordinary deputy mayor, Alison Lowe, using our lived experience, we've, we started out on this journey two years ago, putting the safety of women and girls at the heart of our police and crime plan. And this sits really well in that police and crime plan. So I'm really, really grateful for the time and effort that's gone into this. We've already, as well as the research, funded 10 pilots Across, uh, pardon me, <clears throat> across West Yorkshire, um, uh, two in each local authority. Some great outcomes already from those interventions. And the Mayor's Safer Community Fund, which uses the proceeds of crime, that money grasped from criminals, given back to communities, already 500,000, over 500,000 pounds, has been given to 88 projects that are focusing on women and girls. And these projects have reached 42,068 people. I'm pretty proud of that number, actually. In two years, I do think that's quite good reach. Supporting uh, women and girls' access to safe spaces to exercise. Also, we've created um, safe space hubs in town centres. Obviously, the nighttime economy is linked to this. <clears throat> if women can't use parks once it goes dark, um, the nighttime economy is also important. We've channeled £700,000 into safe space hubs, Leeds, Halifax, Bradford, Wakefield and Huddersfield. But fundamentally, women should and girls should feel safe wherever they are, and that's why this research is so important. And as um, you spoke about earlier this morning, doing something for girls <clears throat> benefits all of us. Safer communities aren't just safer for women and girls, they're also safer for men and boys. So I think the work we do hopefully will then translate into our men and boys strategy as well going on uh, later into the year. So thank you very much Professor Anna Barker and your team for the hard work on this.
and such valuable insights that hopefully we can cascade around the country and be brilliant thought leaders. Everybody in this room is a thought leader, an advocate and a champion taking this message out to those decision makers. And also it's helped us with our relationship with the university that our relationship has grown with funding from the Economic and Social Research Council, Keep Britain Tidy and Make Space for Girls. Being able to have advocates and champions in other areas is also incredibly helpful. Because this can't be, and whilst I'm really proud of it, and doesn't it look amazing, it can't be just something that sits on a shelf. This is practical guidance that needs to be implemented. And I know we're going to hear about some of those suggestions now. Um, and they're suggestions that we're encouraging our local authority partners to trial, to undertake, um, to give it a go. But also to get more women and girls in parks is exactly what we want to achieve. So I'm grateful for all your contributions. I'm grateful that you're here today on this journey with us, leading the way from West Yorkshire across the country and making a difference, a really palpable difference for the next generation. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me to speak.